All right, my friends, we're going to take a quick little look at some commonly used volume elements in these different coordinate systems. Um, easiest one is a, in a Cartesian system, and none, none of my students ever have trouble with this. If you, if you need a little chunk of volume, right, you just can think of it as like a little box. And you, to get the volume of the, the, the little infinitesimal little chunk of volume, um, you know, this, this dimension here would be dx, little wiggle in x. Here's a little wiggle in y. And then the height of the thing would be like dz. And so just by multiplying, you know, length by width by height, you get the, the volume element. So in Cartesian coordinates, your, your little most primitive volume element, just dx, dy, dz. Right. If you go over into spherical coordinates, what happens there is you'll get these little, um, like, like little chunks of a sphere that you tend to use as the little primitive volume element. And they tend to look like, uh, I'll draw a little picture of it here first. So they tend to look like this. And what you need to do is, is figure out kind of how much, imagine it being almost like a little cube, and you need to figure out how much each little, how long each little side is. Well, this little wiggle here, that's a wiggle in like the radial coordinate. And so you're, um, this little distance here, nobody, people don't tend to have that much trouble with it. This little, this little wiggle here, you're just wiggling the, the radius. So that's like dr, right? Um, this one, um, people will often get too because, um, not to have too much trouble with, um, because it's really just kind of arc length. What you're doing is you're taking a radius r and you're sweeping it, um, um, over an angle theta. Um, I'll use theta as the angle from the um, from the z-axis, kind of more physicist engineer type notation. And so th the mistake people will make sometimes is they'll call this this guy like d theta because the theta is being wiggled. But the the thing you got to be careful of is is that would not make it a length. And so to turn it into a length, it's got to be r d theta. So you take the it's arc length. It's a little bit of arc length. So all that's left is the um, what people find to be the most difficult, which is, um, in fact, I might even switch colors for this, is this little dude right here, uh, this guy, to find out what that dimension is. And the thing to realize is what you're sweeping there is you're not actually sweeping R, but you're rather sweeping this little length here. Okay, so you're sweeping... You're sweeping this length, and now here's the key. The length of this piece here, here's like a little right triangle, okay? The length of this piece here is r sine theta. So you're not sweeping r, but you're sweeping r sine theta. That's always the toughest one for people to see, all right? So if you want this itty bitty length then, the, the, the angle that you're sweeping it over is phi, right? Because phi is your angle that kind of sweeps in this plane. Right, so you're kind of sweeping, you're sweeping phi. And so this length then is going to be r sine theta d phi. Right. So what we need then to do to get the volume of that little spherical chunk is multiply these three things together. So there's this side is dr, this side is r d theta, and then we need like the depth like into the into the page or whatever and that's r sine theta d phi so the product of those things will be your um, little volume element um, so i'm just going to write that here so for uh, spherical coordinates our dv is going to be well it's the product of these three things this guy this guy and this guy so for style, what people will tend to do is they'll write all the little infinitesimals at the end. And so what they'll do is they'll write it as r squared sine theta, and then all the little infinitesimals, dr, d theta, d phi. Okay, so there's your uh, spherical coordinate um, volume element, most primitive volume elements, this little chunk of a sphere, right? If you go over into cylindrical, that's usually a little bit easier. Um, the cylindrical chunk um, tends to look like this. Let's draw a little piece of a cylinder. Tends to look like this. Um, what you're doing here is you're, um, this little dimension here, this little excursion, there you're just wiggling your little uh, radial coordinate, whether it be rho or r. 
So this little dude is, is called dr. We'll just call it, uh, we'll use r. Um, with this coordinate here, you're sweeping r. So here's your coordinate r. You're sweeping r over that, um, over that angle, um, let's call it phi, that angle um, in the plane. So what that means is this little bit of arc length is r d phi. So a mistake that people will sometimes make is they'll call that d phi, but then that wouldn't be a length. Um, and then the other little excursion would be up here along the z-axis. So this like height of this guy is dz. And so it's just the product of those three things to get the volume of that little chunk. And so in cylindrical coordinates, your primitive volume element um, is going to be um, r, d, r, d, phi, d, z. Very often people will also use theta instead of phi um, for this. Um, so those are your three primitive uh, volume elements in Cartesian spherical and cylindrical coordinates.